getting. You can't always. This is the death. Remarkably him. Turn back. Towards God. Rise up. One of the things that an average person in our world today is gripped with is fear. Many of us have allowed fear to sit on the driving seat of our life. So we live our life in fear of what they might say about our decision. My name is Father Dom Ori. I welcome you to this episode to explore on your fears. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was nearing his suffering and ultimate death on a cross as the enemy of the state. With all the baggage that comes with being crucified on a cross, he knelt in the dark corner of the Garden of Gethsemane and began to pray to his Heavenly Father. He prayed, Father, remove this cup from me, but please, not what I want, but your will be done. This was a dark night for Jesus, a night while he was so afraid of his ultimate death that he was sweating blood while he was praying. But the difference is, Jesus was not afraid of being afraid because he knew it was just fear. See friends, there is a good chance that if you talk to somebody whom you have observed is living in fear, they will probably deny being afraid. Because we like to say, I'm not afraid. Most people who are living in fear are not even aware of it. They are afraid of admitting that they are living in fear. Because in our world today, there is a certain kind of shame that comes from admitting being afraid. This is why we even deny it to ourselves to acknowledge that we are afraid of life sometimes. We rather put up a facade to claim that we have everything under control, when in actual fact, we don't have anything under control. None of us do. Hence, the saying, fake it till you make it, which is a total lie. It took me a long time to acknowledge the fact that most of the things I was doing in my life, some of my life choices and daily decisions we are being influenced by an undercurrent fear lurking within, preventing me from venturing into the unknown and participating in the ongoing creation of the world. I started asking the harder questions about how I live and move in the world. And it was then that a friend lovingly asked me, what are you really afraid of? You see, friends, fear has a way of making us live in denial of its control in our lives. What then happens to us is that we suffer out of our fear of fear. No wonder A.T. Hillerson said, man suffers most through his fears of suffering. So why? Why are we so afraid of fear? In answer to that question, James Finley said, we are afraid of fear because we believe it has the power to name who we are and it fills us with shame. We feel ashamed that we are going around as a fearful person. And so we pretend that we are not afraid. We try our best to find our own way out of feeling afraid. But this is our dilemma, our stuck place that Jesus wants to liberate us from. This is why I believe fear has gotten a bad rep in our world today. We deny it, and yet it has a grip on us. The truth is that fear has helped us to survive all these years till today. I mean, think about it. Think of our ancestors. Fear helped them to protect themselves when there was an imminent threat to their survival. 
This is why I believe fear is good for you in some sense, even though it may sound unconventional to you right now. However, we do not let fear take control of our lives. I see fear as the flashing light that tells me something is about to happen that may not be good. It is the flashing light on the dashboard of my car indicating that my car may need an engine oil replacement. You see, the acknowledgement of fear is a positive way to be. But letting fear get control of your life is a negative response to fear. There is, there is this beautiful story in the book of Joshua about a man named Joshua. After the death of Moses, the mantle of leadership fell on Joshua to lead the Israelites to the promised land. There is a certain kind of fear that paralyzed Joshua when he received this great task because he had big shoes to fill. He thought of Moses as this great revealed leader who had gone and then he had to think about himself, the one who would take over. And then he asked himself the questions that we often ask ourselves. Have I got what it takes? See, sometimes we have fear of running out. And this comes especially when we have something that demands all of ourselves. We ask ourselves, have I got what it takes to be a dad, to be a mom, a student, an athlete? Have I got what it takes to say yes to love, yes to God, and yes to participating in the ongoing creation of the world? Because to be honest, all of us have got something to give and to do, but often we focus on our fears instead of our calling. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of all who love God and are called according to His purpose. The words that stuck with me was, of course, called according to His purpose. Think about it. If God has called you to a certain destiny or journey of life, what makes you think that God will not make all things work out for you? The truth is that the world awaits you, your true, unique, quirky, weird, awesomely amazing, imperfectly perfect self to emerge and be who you are meant to be. Sometimes we are so in tune with our false self that we fear losing all the false images we have built up over the years. A heart that is attuned with the true self knows that the true self diminishes every fear of loss because nothing is ever lost when you're true to yourself. When you realize this, you know that only love in you can spot and enjoy the love you see out there. Fear cannot lead you anywhere and not anywhere good. It will only lead you to constriction and folding up like a cheap tent. See, when Joshua was constricting and folding like a cheap tent out of fear, asking himself whether he has got what it takes to lead the people of Israel to their destiny. God speaks. And when God speaks, this is what God said. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. How amazing would it be if we could hear those ways whenever we are gripped with fear. Be courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's as if God wants Joshua to know that His presence is with him every step of the way. The good news is, that's what God wants us to know as well. Whether we feel God's presence or not, God is with us and God is for us. God is ahead of us, drawing us to a future beyond ourselves. God is 100% on our side, whether we like it or not. 
Fear can only make us feel blind to this truth. That's why you have to overcome the blindness. You see, when I hear the story of Mary, a teenage girl who said yes to God's purpose for her, I found it fascinating. When Angel Gabriel appeared before Mary to give her a message that would change the course of her life, her response was, yes, yes. This is not the kind of yes that needs to know about everything. No, 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 but a yes that rests in the unknowing and yet confident that God will always show the way when fear says otherwise. Mary's yes is a clear example of the soul's movement to anything that will bring life. And that is essentially love. The soul moves forward by inclusion, by saying yes and not no to whatever comes its way. This is why the natural movement of your soul is to move towards life and whatever makes your soul so. The natural movement of your soul is to expand and become larger out of love, not to become smaller out of fear. We even have a way of expressing it when we say that a person has got a big heart because it's true. When you hear the inner Christ wisdom in you, speaking truth to your heart, telling you, you know you can do this. It is always God drawing you to somewhere that brings life to your soul. Fear will always try to prevent you from living like that. Fear will always draw you to fear-based people more quickly if you fail to recognize it in your life or admit your own fear. When operating through your false self, fear will always, almost, make you believe your false self is your true self. It will unite all parts of your false self, thus boosting your ego. And you know what? Your ego triumphs by constriction, self-protection, and by constantly saying no to anything that will threaten its control in your life. There is this story in the Gospel of Luke when Peter and the sons of Zebedee have been out fishing all night, but they caught nothing. But then, then Jesus came into Peter's boat. Just be aware what happens when Jesus comes into your boat. But Jesus came into Peter's boat and asked Peter to set out towards the deep water. When they got into the deep water, Jesus asked Peter to cast his net into the deep water so as to make a great catch. But Peter replied, with all due respect, Master, we have been out all night long fishing, but caught nothing. But he then said to Jesus, if you say so, Master, I will cast out my net one more time, one more time. At this time, they caught a great number of fish that their net began to tear. They had to signal their neighbors to come and give them a hand. You see, when Simon Peter saw what had happened, he fell on his knees and said to Jesus, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. It is fascinating that Jesus asked Peter to cast his net into the deep water. The deep waters here is symbolic of all the unknown territories of life's adventure that demands taking risk. It tells us there is a lot you can't see, and yet you can't see unless you venture. The Bible says, test and see. This demands going out of our comfort zone, embracing the uncertainties of life, and moving away from rationalizing everything, which is what Peter did when he said to Jesus, Master, we have been fishing all night, but caught nothing. But then he heeded to Jesus' advice to put the net out into the deep water, to take risk. The result was an overwhelming experience that filled Peter with awe and wonder. And then Peter said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. You see, this phrase is the most common phrase in the entire Bible. Some said that it appeared 365 times 
one for every day of your life. This will help you to move away from fear-based person who is afraid God doesn't love them or care about them to a love-based person whose life is moved by love, a life lived knowing that there is nothing to prove and nothing to be afraid of because you know God is always for you and on your side. In a way, I believe that as Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. He is speaking to us right now, right here. Do not be afraid of who you are. Don't be afraid of yourself. I mean, look at what you were able to do, Peter, by just taking a risk and casting into the deep waters. And you listen to me right now. You can take a risk and cast out into the deep waters. You see, casting out into the deep waters will always take you to somewhere new and thrilling. But if you stay in the shallows, there is no risk, no surprise, and hence, nothing new to discover. Is this you? Afraid to cast your net into the deep waters because of what people are going to say? Or worried if you are going to fail? Maybe you find yourself second-guessing yourself, asking whether you are capable of doing what you are called to do. Remember this, there is always going to be a voice, whether from someone or a voice in your head telling you, don't do this, especially when you are trying something new, something that will take you out of your comfort zone, something that you know is going to be terrifying. But it's something very important in your life. There's always, there's always going to be the risk that everything will fall apart, yes? But the regret of not casting yourself into the deep waters is far worse than casting and catching nothing. Master, if you say so, I will throw my net into the deep waters. Of course, God wants you to cast out your net. Of course, God has given you everything you need. So do not hold back from doing so. Fear may tell you, you know, this might not go well. People may criticize you. You could lose everything. The answer to such question is always, I know, but with a smile on your face, I know, I know is the counter response to such questions of fear and anxiety. This could be a failure, I know. It could fall apart, I know. I know, I know, of course. I, of course people are going to mock me. Of course I could lose a ton of money. Of course I could fall flat on my face. Of course the whole thing is risky. The adequate response is always, I know. See, this will set you free from spending your God-given energy and life being afraid to humbly living with a sense of gratitude that you get to be here. There's always going to be something that will terrify you. It makes us humans. But the question is not to live in fear because we are afraid of being afraid. Do not be afraid and cast out your net into the deep waters. Thank you for listening. And I hope these words inspire you and release you from the cobwebs of fear in your life so that you could venture into the unknown with courage. And I hope to see you next time. God bless you. to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Salon World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you, you're involved to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.